Hi, I am Cam and we are going to cover the Leiva Discipline Model in this short video clip. This is linked with the section number 6 of the textbook The Economy, edited by Core Econ. So let's go to my full desktop. So we start actually here in the unit 6, uh, the firm, owners, managers and employees. Uh, this is the outline for today, so we will cover, uh, uh, we will discuss who are the owners and the managers, who are the employees, and then with the concepts that we are going to cover, we are going to build the labor discipline model. So in this mo unit, we are going to use a model of interactions within the firm to explain how wages are determined and how this influences unemployment. We are going to depart a little bit from traditional macroeconomics as the traditional macroeconomics assumptions about wages uh, take, uh, take out the fact that um, households in the economy have certain costs uh, that um, uh, are going to influence the wage price setting. Also, um, we, are, we are going to explore the problem of incomplete contracts. That is our second bullet point here. So let's start by, start by explaining what are the owners and managers. So this is a, a very uh, a first dis dis distinction that we need to make here in order to explain our model. Uh, which is the separation of ownership and control. So um, we have here in our model that uh, we have that a, a particular a separation. Um, uh, the board of directors is going to have the ownership and the managers are going to take the control and will decide on the use of other people's funds. So Therefore, we have a situation in which we have asymmetric information. Asymmetric means that the information um, has some deficiencies. So uh, uh, and information can, can be, for instance, private and it can be incomplete. And that is why we have here this dotted arrow in the feedback loop within the managers and the boards of directors. And the boards of directors are conveying the uh, information, complete information to the manager, but the manager has the ability to filter the information that is receiving from workers. So the dash upward green arrow represents a problem of asymmetric information, uh, meaning that the information is not perfect. Not everything is disclosed. Owners or managers do not always know what their subordinates are doing, nor all their directions or commands are necessarily carried out by uh, the uh, workers. So here uh, it is uh, the first conflict in this relationship that we have uh, actually uh, going on in, in the actual capitalist situation, a conflict of interest between the owners and managers. So managers' actions have impact on the profits of uh, the business, yes, and the profits of the owners. But if profits increase thanks to the manager's work, they will not automatically uh, benefit. And this creates a conflict of interest between managers and owners. So in order to align the interests of both, both parties, so usually managers are being paid for the performance in companies' shares. So if they start being, uh, getting the ownership of the company, they, uh, the idea is they are going to act uh, as uh, the owners and try to increase and maximize, maximize the profit. And also the board of directors are going to monitor the manager's performance in order to get to know if he or she is increasing the profits and the benefits for the shareholders. 
On the other hand, we have the employees. The employees have incomplete contracts. We are calling uh, the contracts that the businesses have or the firms have with the um, employees incomplete because they cannot, uh, uh, they do not have uh, all the um, requirements. It's, it's impossible to put everything in the contracts. So there are things that actually depend on the future of future events. Some aspects of the job are difficult to measure and, uh, and, and are difficult to measure as well uh, in terms of what is the effort. Yes. So incomplete contracts do not specify in an enforceable way every aspect of the exchange that affects the interest of parties. It's just not possible because many of the things are qualitative. So if you think well in any job, yes, there are things that are not in the contracts because uh, of um, qualitative uh, variables. So it's very difficult to compare, for instance, to uh, works, uh, say uh, teaching, yes, um, just based on, on effort, a uh, time effort, when uh, uh, probably there is a qualitative effort as well that is not being measured in their contracts. So one way to uh, pay the efforts of uh, the uh, employees is to use the peace rate pay or the peace rate work. This is a type of employment, a type of contract, a contract in which the worker is being paid a fixed amount of money per unit. Uh, that is making. However, uh, this uh, way of paying do not apply really and is not like the general uh, form of pay for uh, the whole economy. It's actually very rarely used in most of today's firms because it is difficult to measure the output in modern jobs. So, for instance, if you are working as a, uh, as an economist or as an analyst, so it's very difficult for the firm to calculate um, uh, or to measure uh, the outputs that you are delivering. Some outputs will be um, easy to achieve and some others are going to be more difficult to achieve, achieve as an analyst. So uh, it's going to be very difficult to use this piece uh, rate pay. Moreover, employees sometimes work in groups. So if they are working in groups, it's very difficult to assess what portion of the project can be allocated to certain employee in order to pay uh, a salary to that employee. So as you can see, this way of payment is not the way in which we actually can model something uh, in order to uh, assess like the price setting mechanism of the economy. The worker's efforts uh, means that uh, the worker is actually taking a decision in terms of what is the effort that is going to pay or that is going to put to certain job. So at the beginning is going to receive certain uh, salary and uh, the workers is going the worker or the employee is going to decide what is the effort that is going to use based on the work ethic? Yes. So uh, he is going to feel like uh, the uh, moral responsibility of uh, finishing the job because he's being paid. Feelings of responsibility. Yes. That are uh, different from ethic in, in which uh, responsibility means more like individual responsibility. So, um, as well, because it was to reciprocate a feeling of gratitude for good working conditions. So, if you uh, want to pay back for the opportunity to work, so therefore is going to uh, um, uh, work harder. However, I believe that uh, these last three uh, reasons are uh, the, the most important ones, which are the benefits for measurable output, so the benefits it, it, it receives, for instance, the monetary uh, benefits, promotions, and also the fear of being fired. 
because if the employee is being fired, is going to have a cost of opportunity, is going to incur in the cost of not perceiving the same amount of money that it would if um, it would devote more effort to the job. So the fear of being fired is actually a very strong determinant of the worker's effort. So as the the uh, the fear to get uh, to to uh, lose the job is a very important determinant. We can conclude that we have a situation in which employees receive certain wage or certain salary, and it has certain cost in which uh, uh, is going to incur. So it will it will try to avoid the cost of losing the job. Yes. So uh, we arrive to the concept of employment rents. The employment rents rents are not uh, but uh, are just the cost of a, 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 a job loss, which includes the lost income, yes, that is perceiving uh, currently during the job, plus the cost to start a new job, or minus the cost of starting a new job, minus the loss of other benefits that is receiving, yes. Uh, such as uh, an office, uh, medical insurance, such as um, allocation, uh, help, vouchers, etc. And social costs is going to face as well. So we as well need to decrease from uh, these wages the social costs, which are the stigma of being unemployed. So with this information, so therefore we are able to calculate the employment rents. First of all, in order to calculate the employment rents, we need to discuss the reservation wage, which is the value of the next best option in terms of employment in the case of losing a job. This can be as well the level of unemployment benefits of someone when it loses the job. So that is going to be actually the actual minimum that is going to perceive per hour if um, he is going to lose the job. So therefore, the employment rent is going to be equal to the wage, yes, minus the reservation wage, which is the, the uh, actual unemployment benefits, minus the this utility of effort. because as the worker is um, performing certain effort, um, is losing uh, a time that could have uh, been uh, used in uh, leisure, for instance, in doing things that he likes. So there is a dis this utility for the effort that is conducting by doing that job. So therefore, in here, in this uh, section, we can calculate actually the employment rents. So here we have a person who has $12 in early wage, yes, and this um, uh, employment rents is, is going to be able to be calculated by just by subtracting uh, uh, $2, so you see, from 6 to 8, $2 of this utility of effort when employed, so for Maria, it, it has been calculated that it's $2, that effort, that this utility of effort. And um, we have as well a reservation wage, which is in this case $6, because we are assuming that there are some unemployment benefits for people in that economy. So 6 plus 2 is 8, and if we sus subtract um, 8 to 12, so therefore, we have that employment rent per hour is four. And that is the, the, the money that the business is paying uh, Maria in order to, for Maria to uh, devote a certain effort in uh, her job um, uh, to produce something. So with the previous analysis of uh, the um, employment rent, we are able to develop our labor discipline model. First of all, we need to uh, associate wages and effort. 
The employer cannot directly um, ensure the workers' effort and, and cannot, uh, like, um, uh, at the beginning, at least, it will not be able, at, at the beginning of this uh, situation, is going, not going to be able to encourage um, the worker to work more or less. At least, meanwhile, uh, it has certain history. So, the larger the employment rent, Yes, that difference between the, the salary and the costs, the worker is going to be or is going to put, put more effort to reduce the change the chance of getting fired. That is the way in which the em employer can encourage the worker's efforts by paying more. If the employer pays more, so the worker is going to pay is going to pay more effort. It's going to put more effort into the activity. Another way in which the worker is going to put more effort to the activity is by larger costs of job loss. So, for instance, if you are in a different economy in which losing a job is actually a, a something very bad because it's very difficult to find a job, so therefore the costs are going to be very, very high. Discouraging workers to lose uh, their job. So workers are going, actually, they are going to put a lot of effort in order to keep their jobs, even uh, if that means that they will then uh, try to uh, um, um, devote more hours and put more efforts uh, in uh, uh, the actual work. So we have here then an employment game. We are call, going to call this game as in, in microeconomics games. So then what is this employment game? So in the first step, the employer chooses a wage, any wage. As long as the worker works hard enough, uh, the worker will keep the job and, uh, at, at the offered wage. In the second step, the worker is going to decide what is the level of effort that is going to put taking into account the cost of losing the job and uh, the, the, the wage that is being provided by the employee. So what are the payoffs for uh, in this game? This is actually a Nash game. So for the firm, uh, the, the uh, uh, profits are going to be the, pay, the payoff and for the worker is going to be employment rent. So here we have the worker's best response cost. What is the worker's a, a best response cost? Uh, we are seeing it here, but I would like to cover actually this uh, using the uh, textbook. So let's go here to this section. Here we are seeing the effort per hour of uh, our average household in the economy and here we are seeing the hourly, the hourly uh, wage. We have here the reservation wage at the level of six. Recall that this is nothing but the uh, unemployment benefits. Well, it can be as well the, the, the possibility of the worker having a different job. So we are going to be six. And we have that the shape of this curve is like this, is concave because um, the worker at the beginning is, is, is very easy for the worker to uh, just translate um, her effort per hour into a, a little bit more, more and more of hourly wage. But there is, it comes to a point in which um, the payout for um, like, uh, like additional effort per hour is going to be higher, yes? So in order to arrive to the 100% of effort, the worker is going then to ask more and more uh, wages because uh, the leisure time is going to be, actually the substitution for leisure time is going to be higher. So here we have the worker's best response curve when expected unemployment duration is 44 weeks. So we are assuming this in this example. 
and we have a duration of looking for a job of 44 weeks and this is the code that is showing us the best response of the worker. Here we have that a, at a level of 0 0.50% of effort, yes, so is looking at Facebook 50% and working half of the time, for instance, uh, we have that uh, this worker for this rep household, representative household of the economy, is uh, receiving $12 in hourly wages. Yes, so therefore there is a slope at, at, at that level, a J, that is uh, telling us that uh, the worker is still increasing uh, the uh, effort per hour. Yes, but there is going to be a level at which this uh, slope is going to uh, provide less effort per hour uh, as we increase the hourly wage. It's going to get flatter, the slope is going to get flatter and flatter and flatter. So, as you can see, when the wage is low, the best response, response curve is steep. A small wage increase raises effort by a substantial amount. Yes? And that is what we have in here. So here we have an hourly wage of 24. You can see the slope that is, is getting flatter and flatter, meaning that the payout of carry on increasing the wages is um, uh, providing less and less and less effort per hour. So here we have the uh, uh, worker's best response, and this is the feasible uh, set of responses of this worker. Um, given the hourly wage and the effort per hour. This is this slope, we are going to cover this, uh, this slope is the MRT, which is um, the a marginal rate of uh, transformation, uh, which is the slope of the best response curve is um, the, the, the marginal uh, uh, rate of transformation of higher wages into more worker effort. Yes. Uh, and that is how we set then the uh, uh, response or the effort of the workers when um, just applying their efforts into the work. So, what is the firm's best response? So we saw the employee's best response. So let's analyze then the firm's best response. So to maximize the profits, the firm wants to minimize the costs of production. So there is a trade-off between the wages and the effort. So what the companies or the firms are going to look is at a ratio between the effort and the wages. Because they want to, to get to know what is the effort that they are receiving per unit of dollars. Of dollars. Yes, in this case, dollars. So if they want to get to know that, a simple division is going to give them that range. So the employer should find a feasible combination of effort and wage that maximizes or minimizes, in this case, the cost per unit of effort. So here we have in this slide the cost of effort, yes, which is denoted by every line that we have in here. So in this line, we have the same division between E and M, E and, yes, E and W, E, the effort, and W, the wage. So the slope of the Isokov course is the marginal rate of substitution, which means that uh, um, is the, the rate at which the um, a firm is going to get more and more uh, products. So if, if we are in, on, in this um, graph here, I, be, I, will, I will explain this using the uh, next um, modeling here. Yes. So we have here that uh, the wages are uh, a 10 and we have in the, an effort per hour of 0 0.45. So if we do the division between these to get the ratio, we know that the effort is equal to 0 0.045, actually. And this line is denoted 
the same level of that ratio. Yes, the ratio between E and W. That's why we have a, here in a straight line. So in, the, in all this line, even if the company pays 20, um, it's going to receive, if it pays 20, it's going to receive 0 0.90 uh, or 0 0.9 in, in uh, effort per hour, meaning that 90% of uh, the effort is going to be put here. And that is the, the uh, a position of the firm. Yes? So here we have the employers in different costs, the ISO cost, the ISO cost costs for effort. Yes. And if we are able to see here, we have here a, a, like a, a slope as well for this um, ISO cost. And we will be able to see as well that there are many ISO costs here for this uh, a, a company. Yes. At different levels of a, a, a slopes for a, effort divided by wage, yes, and uh, the steeper the line is going to be lower cost for the company, and the shallow, the, the, this ISO cost, um, the company or the firm is going to face higher cost of effort. All right, so um, we have here, therefore, that this slope of these ISO costs for the uh, employer, uh, they are going to be called um, uh, TR or MRS, which are the employers indifferent between points of an ISO cost line. So the slope of the uh, effort ISO cost line is the marginal rate of substitution, MRS. So every ISO cost will have an MRS. So as we have a slopes in here, I think a modeling the approach is straightforward because if we have here the position of the perspective of the employee, yes, the, the, the effort that is uh, the curve of effort that is going to be able to provide. And if we also have the ISO cost for the firm, so we will have an optimum solution where the slope of this curve and the slope of this ISO cost of the firm is the same. When uh, these two lines uh, are uh, uh, made meet in one and only one point, we have that the uh, marginal rate of substitution from uh, uh, the worker is equal to the marginal rates of uh, sorry, marginal rate of substitution of the business is equal to the marginal rate of uh, uh, transference from the uh, workers perspective. So here we have, as you can see, MRS equal MRT. So at the beginning, uh, so we can imagine then that this was the wage that was provided to uh, uh, this um, representative household but this is not a situation that is optimum uh, with the time uh, after it, it, the firm is looking at the efficiency. So you can see how actually um, the business is going to offer a salary of 12. And this is going to be the optimum. If it offers a salary of 10, it's going to receive this level, which is non-optimum. However, if uh, there is something going on in the economy and if the, uh, there is, for instance, a, a crisis in the economy and this ISO cost gets or, um, or if this worker's best response shifts to the left, yes, the situation in which they don't want to lose their jobs, yes, so the firm is going to be able to get B, a situation which is going to be cheaper for them. So therefore, $12 is the early wage that the employer should set to minimize the costs and maximize the profits. So I think in that we cover then the efficiency wage and the wages that are set higher than the reservation wage. So workers will care about losing the job and provide more effort. So um, 
This uh, uh, previous model is called the uh, uh, labor discipline model. But it will not be complete, complete if we do not cover the topic of involuntary employment. So a involuntary employment is being out of work but preferring to have a job at the wages and working conditions that otherwise identical employed workers have. So there must always be involuntary employment in the labor discipline model because in equilibrium, both wages and involuntary employment have to be high enough to ensure employment rent is high enough for workers to put effort in. In other words, there will be the, there needs to be like a punishment for the employee if um, does not put effort into the work and, and a punishment if it loses the job. So um, that is the, in, uh, the involuntary employment. There is always going to be a, like a, a sector of uh, the economy that is in, uh, out of work and that um, uh, uh, but is preferring to have a job at the wages and working conditions that are otherwise identical employed workers have. So there are factors that can shift the equilibrium. I think I mentioned one of them when I was uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, um, the uh, optimum and um, situations that can change or shift the, the curve of uh, Maria, uh, our representative agent uh, in the economy. So if the reservation wage changes, this is the, the benefits, so let's say that if they increase, so therefore we will have a shift to the right in this uh, graph. If we have a de decrease in, the, uh, in that reservation wage, so therefore we will have a shift to the left. On the other hand, if we have a downturn in the economy, uh, we will have a shift to the left. So workers are going to get uh, more eager to work harder because the costs of losing the job are going to get higher and higher. And that is actually the involuntary unemployment. All right, so as a summary, we can say that firms uh, and owners and managers have a power over workers. Although they have a conflict of interests, yes, the owners and managers, they try to uh, sort that conflict of interest by um, giving shares to the managers and to uh, provide some benefits uh, benefits for, for the managers and monitor the managers. Uh, we cover that the contracts are incomplete. They do not cover every single detail because it's very difficult to uh, uh, like fill contracts that are so detailed uh, that even cover uh, qualitative measures. We cover the topic of employment rents, which are the wages minus the costs. And uh, they are like the, the monetary motivation um, for workers to put uh, effort in their jobs. Secondly, we cover the topic of labor discipline model in which we have a, an optimum. So we stand from the perspective of our representative agent, the worker, and we set a curve. And we also explain the situation of the firm we had in a straight line. So when both lines meet in one and only one point, so we have a maximum uh, that um, we call uh, the uh, maximum feasible effort and is found by finding the marginal rate of uh, a substitution and the marginal rate of transformation. Finally, we cover the topic of in, in, in involuntary unemployment as, the future, as one of the features of the equilibrium. Um, that's it, that is a situation in which um, um, uh, people, or we need uh, that feature in the model in order uh, uh, to have certain costs uh, for uh, people losing their jobs and uh, making them uh, like uh, put more effort into uh, their activities at uh, their firms. 
Okay, guys, with this, I complete the uh, section, the unit six of the book, The Economy.